Good morning. I am shooting this video in the morning hours of today. It's like six o'clock. <sighs> I'm anticipating that my son is gonna wake up any minute. I shouldn't have waited this long, so um, we're gonna see how quickly I can get through this without still being, you know, good at it. And then um, hopefully we won't be interrupted by a little boy halfway through this, but we'll find out. All right, so um, today we're doing 8.1. We've only got one chapter left, so that's good. Um, and we're talking about independent samples and dependent samples. So independent samples are samples that are selected from, samples that are selected from one population are not related uh, to samples from another population. So an example of that would be like um, sample one could be the ACT scores of 30 seniors. And sample two could be the ACT scores of 45 juniors. So you can really tell um, if things are independent or dependent without even thinking about them because um, if they're dependent, that means that they have like a one-to-one -one correspondence. These are like paired samples. So like the ACT scores of the seniors and the juniors, they may have had some of the same teachers and be related in that way. but. Like, if I took one of the 30 seniors um, and compared their ACT score to one of the 45 juniors, how would I know which senior to compare to which junior? They're not paired up. They're not matched in any way. It'd be different if it was, like, 30 seniors and 30 juniors that are their brother or something like that or siblings so that we would have a one-to-one -one connection. Um, so in a de dependent sample, there's a one-to-one -one Correspondence uh, and a connection between the samples. So they have to have the same population too. I mean, not population, same sample size. A great example of this is like uh, weight loss or most scientific studies like with a before and after. So if you have anything that has a before and after, that is definitely going to be dependent. Okay, independent looks like this. You've got two populations, wonderful pictures there. This population has some, some um, numbers in it. <laughs> and they don't necessarily have the same amount of numbers in each population, and they are not related to each other, so there's no overlap. With dependent, You've got two populations, both are exactly the same size. Not populations, sample sizes are both exactly the same size. And then you can literally draw a line between them to each one because there's a one-to-one -one correspondence. So like here's the person before the weight loss study, here's the person after the weight loss study. Those could be connected. All right, so now you've got to tell me are these independent or dependent? So go ahead and try them first. Pause the video. Pause, pause, pause. Do it. 
I'm even trying to talk quieter as if somehow that's going to make my son not wake up in the early wee or hours of the morning. And I know he's going to wake up because last night he went to bed like extra early um, by himself. So he's gotten a lot of sleep. All right. Um, so heights of 27 adult females and heights of 27 adult males. Those are independent because they really have nothing to do with each other. Um, even though there are exactly 27 in each, which makes you think dependent. Um, if I took one adult female from one group and one adult male from the other group, there's no reason why I would connect them. Now, if I wanted to do a study on like the height difference between, um, people in relationships, then I would have a one-to-one -one correspondence because I'd have one male for every female or one person for every person. Um, so those would be a one-to-one. -one. The next one is midterm exam scores of 14 chemistry students and then final exam scores of the same 14 chemistry students. That word is important, though, same. Okay, the same people. So, like, for example, if I was in um, Ms. Zink's chemistry class and uh, whatever I got on my uh, midterm would be compared to whatever I got on my final exam. And that would be a one-to-one, -one, so that is dependent. One page down, two to go. Okay, now once we get into two sample hypothesis testing, that means you're actually comparing populations, which is mo usually what is done um, in, when, with hypothesis testing in real life. Um, you're often comparing two different populations with each other, trying to see if there's a change. This is used in scientific studies a lot. Um, the math starts to get a little bit more complicated. Today the math's not going to be too bad, but tomorrow it's going to be real bad, so... And not real bad as in, like, impossible, but, like, the formulas are just going to get out of control. Luckily, they provide those formulas for you on the AP exam. And, frankly, since you're at home, you can make your own note sheet. So the first thing you have to do is you have to apparently get out of the sunlight. Their beautiful rays of sunlight are ruining my paper. I don't know if I can. I think that's maybe just how it looks now. Great. Okay. Um, so you have to verify uh, that both population standard deviations are known. Um, that the samples are independent and normal, and both populations, or both populations are greater than or equal to 30. So if they're normal, then you're good, but um, if that's not true, then both of them have to be bigger than 30. And this is in the problem. Okay, number two, you have to state the claim and null an alternative hypothesis. And you have to note the level of significance. Which is alpha. So again that says state the claim and null an alternative hypothesis and note the level of significance. Um, in this case, our H sub O and H sub A's are going to look a little different. Um, now you're going to have um, two mu's and you're going to be comparing them, so maybe you want to say uh, this mu is bigger than this mu, so this mean is bigger than this mean, and then the alternative would be less than or equal to. So you're not putting a number in there anymore, you're just comparing two. So you can either say one's bigger than the other, smaller than the other, or not equal to, equal, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. But you can't compare them to an actual number with this test. Okay, next up we're going to determine the critical values. and rejection regions. 